Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you have been following my adventures over on the Julie Thrifts channel, then you saw that I recently went to the Atlanta wholesale market and I definitely noticed a trend there. There was lots of items that kind of had this old world antique look, which was very interesting because I've been doing that a lot on my channel so we're gonna lean into that I'm gonna be doing some more of those looks and then on some upcoming videos I definitely want to do some dupes of some things that I saw on at Atlanta market that I would love to try to recreate so for this video let's take some thrifted items that I recently purchased and give them a beautiful makeover and I also want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video if you did not know, paper mache is trending right now. So when I saw these at Goodwill for 99 cents, I had to pick up not only one of them, but all of them. Now y'all know I'm not loving this bright green color, but we can definitely change that. This is a paper mache bowl that I actually own. So I want to try to match this color and match this look. I think infusion paint in the color Champlain is going to be a great match. So I'm just going to put one quick coat of paint on these green paper mache bowls. I actually want to do two different looks and I want to keep some of them green, but we're going to change it up a little. However, they have this black part at the bottom of the bowl that I really want to blend in a little bit more. So I'm taking infusion paint in the color conservatory and I'm just going to cover up that black. It's not a perfect match, but it'll all blend together in the end. Now I want to give it like a dirty kind of aged look. So I'm going to be using a combination of the Fusion Antiquing Glaze and also the Dixie Belle Brown Wax. If you were wondering what the difference is in these two products, the Antiquing Fusion Glaze is a much more liquidy product and it's really going to seep in to the paper mache on here. And the Dixie Belle Wax is going to be much darker and it's going to sit more on top of the piece. And I think the combination of these two look very pretty. So I'm going to go first with the Antiquing Glaze. Then I'm going to come back with the Dixie Belle Brown Wax. Also, I just got this paintbrush in, y'all. It is called Dixie Belle French Chip. And it's absolutely amazing. Y'all know I love my pointed sashes. So it's like a pointed sash except for your wax products. Now I'm taking a dry paper towel and I'm just going to kind of wipe off any excess that is on there. So this is what the piece looks like now. And this is what we started with. So y'all let me know what y'all think about the transformation. I forgot to show y'all the inside of the piece. So I feel like all the colors blend in really well. Y'all look at all the texture here. I absolutely love it. The bowl that I painted in Champlain is now dry. I only did one coat of paint. And if there's a little bit of green coming through, that's not a big deal. We, um, the more color variation, the better. So I'm going to take my French tip paintbrush, the one that I was putting the brown wax on. It's pretty dry now. I've gotten most of the wax off of it. And now I'm going to do a dry brushing technique where it's just going to highlight some of the texture and the raised parts of this bowl. It's going to give it a lot of dimension and give it that paper mache look that we love. Look how easy that was. Y'all look at these beautiful chunky bookends and look, the top is open, a perfect place for greenery. It would look amazing with a chippy finish. So I'm thinking the Gustavian white milk paint will be the perfect option. If you have not used milk paint before, it comes in a powder form and you mix half powder with half water. Once your powder and your water is thoroughly mixed, 
then you're going to paint your piece. It's just going to go on like any other paint. The first coat is not going to be full coverage, but by the second or third coat, just depending, you know, the darker colors take a less coat. So just depending on what milk paint color you use will determine how many coats of paint you're going for. Also what look you're going for. So if you're going for a more distressed look, or sometimes I use this as a wash and I just want to put one coat of paint on it. This is what it looks like after one coat of paint. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the second coat of paint on. When I have my last coat of milk paint on, I like to take my heat gun and apply heat to it. When you apply heat to milk paint, it kind of makes it dry in place and gives you tons of texture. And a lot of times it also makes it chip. My bookends are all dry. Let me show y'all some beautiful close-ups of all this amazing texture and crackle we got. This is why I love milk paint. Now I could take some sandpaper and distress it some more, but I am so obsessed with all of the texture that I got that I think I'm gonna leave it as is. I'm just kind of taking my hand and rubbing it over the paint and it's just chipping off a little bit and creating, bringing back some of that wood that is underneath, you see that? Love this, look, look all that crackle right there. So I am just going to seal this piece up with some fusion beeswax that'll seal in this milk paint and these beautiful pieces will be done. I hope y'all are enjoying today's video so far. I wanna take a minute to tell y'all about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is who I chose to host my e-commerce store. And when I started, my website only had one tab, the home decor section. And since starting my website, my business and website has grown exponentially. And Squarespace had everything that I needed to accommodate that growth. Squarespace is extremely user friendly. So as I added more products, it was very easy for me to redesign and redo my website on my own. But if you do need help, Squarespace has an excellent help center as well as 24 hour customer service. And not only can you add physical products, but you can add digital downloads. You could add subscription based products. Like I just started my color of the month club and Squarespace made that super easy. So whether you're big, small or growing, Squarespace has everything you need to run your business. So y'all go check out squarespace.com slash Julie's Designs and Signs and Squarespace is giving my viewers 10% off when you use code Julie's Designs and Signs. And I will have everything linked in the description below for y'all. If you have gone through the wood out at the thrift store, you have probably seen something with a heart cut out and you're like, it's so cute, but what can I do to cover this heart? Today, I'm gonna show y'all an easy way. This is a resin casting. I made it from IOD's frames mode and I'm just going to take some Gorilla Glue and I'm going to glue this resin casting on to the wood piece and let it dry for 24 hours. I think this oval shape framed fit this piece really nicely, but in case you have a bigger or a smaller heart, I want to show y'all some other options. I could have used this one, which I think might have been, oh, which one should I use y'all? Now that I see this on here, that's really cute too. And then there's also this smaller one. So they have lots of different options that you can use. And if you have never used resin before, it dries super hard. So it's a perfect thing just to put over a cutout, but also be decorative. My piece has dried overnight. It is really stuck on there. It's not going to be going anywhere. Now it is ready for paint. I want to use Dixie Belle paint in the color French linen. I would say French linen is kind of a grayish color. It has lots of beige in it and lots of gray. And Dixie Belle chalk mineral paint, if you're not familiar with it, it's a chalk paint. So you can paint it on, it goes on super smooth. You can leave it as is, or you can wet distress it or sand it with sandpaper. The 
course, you can find all the products that I use in today's video on my website, Julie's Designs and Signs. And I'll also have everything linked in the description for y'all. Y'all know I love the Stallmaster pointed sashes. They are great for so many projects, but I'm really having lots of trouble getting around the candle holder right here. So Stallmaster creates this brush. It's called a angled finch. It is not broken if you order this, but it's so great to get into all the hard to reach places because of the angle on it. I am loving this French linen color. I decided to leave the handle natural wood because I thought it looked really pretty like this. Now I'm going to take my sander and I'm going to do a combination of distressing it with the sander and wet distressing. I feel like the combination of both give me the most natural look when I want to distress a piece. This is IOD's new Rural Scenes stamp. It comes with two pages of all these little pieces that you could either build your own scene or you could use them on their own like they have this little cottage right here so i thought it'd be cute to maybe do my own little pattern across here and then maybe do something right here i'm gonna stamp the top first i want to use the gray ink i don't want it to stand out too much i kind of want to go for a more tonal look so i'm gonna stamp the top and then it goes over the edge so i'm just going to bend it over and also stamp that part as well on this side i want to stamp this little cottage on this side i'm going to add a little tree and these cute little sheep right here so i'm going to lay it out how i want it and then pick it up with my thin mount i'm going to ink it up with my iod gray ink and then stamp it on my piece this is definitely a very tonal look but that is exactly what i was going for i recently saw somebody in the julie's designs and signs facebook group create a scene with this stamp and stamp a lumbar pillow it was absolutely beautiful they used the iod blue china ink on my little oval i want to add some fusion and teaking glaze to it i think it's just going to bring out all the details of this little frame and it's also going to tie in some of the brown wood tones on the handle i'm just using one of the Stallmaster artist brush and it's really easy with this brush to get all the edges so you just want to put the glaze on and then you're going to wipe off any excess with a dry paper towel for my picture frame i think i just want to stamp these village people right in the center look how cute they are a little woman and her husband and their dog i think this piece came out really good y'all let me know if y'all think i did a good job camouflaging this heart Whenever I find good swans at the thrift store, I always pick them up. And this one came as a set. It is made out of ceramic and unfortunately there are some chips in it. I love the combination of gold and white. So I want to paint these with Dixie Belle's chalk paint in the color cotton. I do want to distress back a lot of this gold. So I'm just going to do one quick coat of paint on them. I think I'm using my Stallmaster number 12 pointed sash. It's so perfect for these small projects with lots of details. This is just one coat of white paint. I feel like the coverage is really great on this piece. Now I'm going to take some sandpaper. I got a round piece. That way I have a little more control over it. And I'm just going to extremely lightly sand back some of that gold and i'll probably come in and wet distress a little bit you don't want to push too hard because we don't want to get to that white ceramic we just want the gold to come through and there's really no right or wrong way to distress it just depends on what look you're going for if i distress too much then i can always add some chalk paint back and if i don't distress enough then i can just you know take the sandpaper and distress a little bit more this is what it looks like after distressing it just with the sandpaper. It kind of got all the high spots. Now I want to come in with my baby wipes and wet distress it. And I think this is going to give it a much more natural look. Like I told y'all, I really like a combination of both techniques when distressing. 
all right, I got my swan all distressed and looking the way that I want. Now, in my last few videos, I use potting soil and a lot of y'all were not into it. So if you're not into the potting soil, you're going to love this product. It's Dixie Belle Dirt in the color Earth. What you're going to do is apply a layer of clear wax. This is Dixie Belle's clear wax. I'm using the French tip paintbrush. Like I told y'all, this is my favorite for the waxes. And I'm just going to apply it to the entire piece. And what this is going to do is it's not only going to seal our paint, but it's going to give something for the dirt to adhere to and also give us lots of time to kind of move it around and be able to get the exact look that we want. This is what the dirt looks like. And I'm just going to take a little pinch of it and put it on my piece. You will get dirty doing this. So I just like to kind of rub it in and get it on there. And then I like to take a dry brush and just kind of move it around. That wax is on there. So we have lots of time to play with this. So it's kind of like distressing. You just really can't mess it up. You're just going to get it on there. And if you feel like you have too much, you could always just take a baby wipe and wipe some of it back. I'm just going to keep messing with it until I get the exact look that I want. I'm going to put more on to begin with because it's really easy to remove if I put too much. And this is also why I went with a little bit of a brighter white color because I knew I was going to be adding this product and that it was going to be toning down the white. I really want the bottom to be more dirty like it's, you know, been sitting outside in a garden or something. All right, guys, here is the finished product. Y'all absolutely let me know what y'all think about the Dixie Belle Dirt. I feel like this one's a little bit whiter. And this one, I distress back a little bit more of the gold. And that's what I love about distressing. I had two pieces that were exactly alike. And I feel like they have a little bit of a different look. So y'all let me know which one y'all like better. The one that's more white or the one that has more gold showing through. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Y'all know the drill. Leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite project. I also have a few announcements for y'all. So as you may have noticed, I used several Dixie Belle products in this video, y'all. I am now carrying the Dixie Belle paint line. I don't have the entire collection up on the website, but I'll be working over the next few months to get everything up on there. If there is a specific product you are looking for, just shoot me an email and I will definitely order it for y'all. I am so excited to finally have a chalk paint line on the website. I will still be carrying fusion paint just like in this video. I feel like it depends on the project, what product that I want to use. Sometimes a fusion all-in-one paint is perfect. Sometimes I really, really want that old textured look and I'll use the milk paint. And then I also just love a good chalk paint and Dixie Belle has the most amazing waxes. They have the clear wax, they have the white wax, they have the brown wax, they have the black wax and they also have a gun grunge gray so y'all definitely go check it out i'll leave it linked in the description below second announcement y'all i now have a blog on my website the same website juliesdesignsandsigns.com and then it is on the blog tab so i'm taking all of my older projects and turn them into blogs so if you are searching for a specific thing it'll be a lot easier to find it over there so y'all definitely go check it out. Just so many exciting things are happening lately and I'm so 
excited that y'all are on this journey with me. Once again, I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. And don't forget, if you would like to maybe start your own e-commerce store or blog, y'all go check out squarespace.com slash Julie's Designs and Signs. And they are giving my viewers 10% off. And I'll also have all of that linked in the description below. Y'all have a great day and I will see y'all next week for a new DIY video. If you love the old world look on today's projects, I will leave a video linked right here that I think y'all would enjoy. Bye guys.